course of its 184 episode long run, spanning 9 seasons, The Flash, which has now ended, has had 19 total main villains, 4 total more than Arrow had, which included all the flashback main villains as well, as while on The Flash, the first 4 seasons had just one main villain each, Season 5 had multiple, and Season 6 onwards was split up into arcs, with each arc having a different main villain, and sometimes, quite frequently in fact, more than one. Because of this, most of the main villains come from the later seasons, which is not necessarily a good thing, because arguably almost all of the good ones come from the earlier seasons. In this video, I'll be looking at all of the 19 main villains on The Flash, and rank them from worst to best, with the criteria of quality including their writing slash dialogue, their acting, their stories, their development, the threatening factor, the rivalry with the Flash, their design, and their effectiveness of use, with something like comic accuracy being less important but not necessarily a non-factor, but also I'll be considering each villain only in the context of the time they were main villains, not influenced by any other appearances, which is especially important for Thawne, who takes up four entries on this list. Make sure to subscribe and let's begin with the ranking of the Flash's many main villains for the the final time. The Speed Force was a complete and utterly terrible idea for a villain. The personification of the forces in the first place was always a terrible idea. It's one of the worst things the show has ever done. But what makes the Speed Force even worse is that she just doesn't make any sense as a villain for the person whose power source is her. Michelle Harrison is great as Nora, but does not have the villain chops. She comes off as much more goofy than threatening, as she's portrayed for some reason as cartoonishly villainous. Over Overall, the entire God Complex storyline with all these forces going bad, it's probably the worst arc on this show, and it has the worst main villain. Only mildly better is the negative still force, still a terrible idea for a villain like the Speed Force, as I just hate this idea of personifying the forces, giving them stories and motivations, I just do not like it. The actual still force was also used as a villain in the past, so it's not like this negative still force is anything new. I guess this time around, he's a main villain, so that is new, but still, Kristen Magby is fine in this villainous role, but definitely nothing special either, and really the only reason the negative still force is higher than the speed force is at least he's a negative force, so it makes sense that he would be a villain. The least personified, and also most fitting to be a villain of the forces, is the negative speed force. He doesn't have a typical actor, as the avatars themselves are far more separate characters compared to the other forces, and also the negative speed force is the mortal enemy to the Speed Force, so it makes sense as a villain. It's the best of the forces, but I just do not like this idea of any of the forces having sentience, and given that it does, the negative Speed Force is still pretty lame, just really the best of the worst. In spite of a very cool costume that kind of looked better on the previous Godspeeds, the true August Heart we ended up getting was the worst of any of the Godspeeds. His movements were awkward and robotic like a Power Ranger, his dialogue was god-awful, and the acting from Karan Oberoi was at the same level as the dialogue, not helped at all by this terrible voice modulation that sounds worse than all of the previous Godspeeds, who in the past sounded pretty cool. His voice is awful. Godspeed was able to multiply apply himself, but remained by far the least threatening speedster ever, not being able to do anything effective and due to these clones being constantly one-shot by any and all lightning constructs from the speedsters. The way they implemented Godspeed over the years was weird, and what it was all leading up to managed to be worse than everything that came before, as Godspeed is the single most Power Rangers level villain on this show. Becoming far too overused at this point, I mean, he was used as the main villain of two arcs in one season, Thawne is a shell of his former self in season 8. His costume is legitimately awful, probably the worst a main villain has ever looked on this show, with the missing chin strap and lack of vibrations just making him look absolutely ridiculous. Tom Cavanaugh gives his worst performance ever in this role, and yet another story where it makes no sense for him to play Thawne, and this is made worse by the fact that Matt Letcher was in this arc but was wasted on this amnesiac good guy version of Thawne, leading to this big reveal where he tears his face off to reveal Tom Cavanaugh. This effect looked cool, but it was maybe one of the most disappointing moments on this show ever, made even worse by Matt Letcher's season 9 appearance proving he is the quintessential Eobard Thawne. This is the arc where Thawne looked worse, had worse dialogue, had a worse performance, and was less threatening than ever before and ever since, while it's also more annoying than ever that he is isn't played by Matt Letcher. 
As one of the final villains of this show, Red Death was pretty damn awful. The costume is pretty bad, being far too bulky which doesn't look great and limits the movement of the character. Plus, it's far too dark and aside from the symbol just doesn't pop on screen. Red Death started out fairly threatening but slowly became less and less so over the course of the 5 episode arc. First by dropping all these famous Batman lines, a lot of which either felt forced or simply didn't make sense, like Red Death calling villains a superstitious and cowardly lot while actively working with villains. Red Death truly fell apart as the main villain, however, when she unmasked herself. Red Death's dialogue is pretty bad, but this is a rare scenario in the Eric Wallace era where that's actually not the single worst thing about the villain. Javicia Leslie just does an awful job with her performance, which makes Red Death feel more like a child throwing a tantrum and less what they intended, which is an unhinged lunatic. I haven't seen Batwoman season 2 or 3, but from what I've heard, Javicia Leslie is not a very good actor, and that's certainly true in Rogue War. Red Death's origin is probably the most interesting thing about him in the comics, being a combination of an evil Batman and the Flash from the Dark Multiverse. I don't care if they're from the Dark Multiverse or just from the Multiverse, but this show does make the origin much worse due to it not being Bruce Wayne, but it's Ryan Wilder who is Batwoman, but also a completely original character. But also, we never even get to see the origin we're just told. Red Death was just a completely failed villain, and it's one of the last villains on the show. It's very disheartening. Easily the worst of the Todd Helbing era main villains is Grace Gibbons, aka Cicada, who was one of the main villains of season 5 was the first time a season had more than one main villain. At the time, it felt like she didn't get enough time to be a main villain, but since then, most of villains got around the same, or maybe even sometimes less episodes, so it's not all that unique of a complaint. What is true is that Grace Gibbons is simply incredibly forgettable, she has no memorable lines, like one or two barely memorable moments, zero rivalry with Barry, or even Nora, who's kind of a counterpart to her, as well as a derivative design, which is just a female Cicada. What Grace feels like is a response to the complaints that Cicada had become stale, while tidying us over until the actual interesting main villain, Thawne, is allowed to show up. Sarah Carter does an okay job with what she's given, but she isn't really given anything to do anyway, so overall, definitely the worst main villain before Eric Wallace. The final main villain of the show, Cobalt Blue, was completely and utterly failed by one simple decision, the structure of Season 9. Out of the 13 episodes after the 5 episode Red Death arc, there were 4 episodes dedicated to filler, before another 4 were dedicated to this final arc. This leads to this final main villain taking 3 episodes to develop into a main villain where he only begins to actually become villainous in the back half of the third episode, and that would be fine if there wasn't literally just one episode left afterwards, or even there, halfway through the conflict ends. Cobalt Blue was the villain of just like one episode, and even then it was only like really half of an episode, and it didn't need to be that way. Three of the four filler episodes do nothing and should have been entirely dedicated to this arc, giving Eddie the screen time he deserved. It would have helped to consider the full seasons of appearances he had in season 1 acting as a sort of origin and giving the audience this preconceived emotional connection, but this just failed because either the writing or even Rick Haznet's acting made Eddie feel like a completely different person, so as an audience member I did not have that preconceived emotional connection. Cobalt Blue is also not very threatening because he's only really been a speedster for a day or two by the time he's finally allowed to fight anyone. Barry should wipe the floor with him, but simply doesn't. And adding in a very underwhelming rivalry with Barry, Cobalt Blue is a very disappointing final villain for this show, in spite of the fact that he looks kind of sick. If they nailed anything about this character, and they did only nail one thing, it's the way he looks. The costume is awesome. Aside from that though, he's kind of a bad villain. Mirror Monarch is the Eric Wallace era villain with by far the longest amount of time to be a villain with a two season spanning 13 episode arc between season 6 and 7, which showcases why it might be a good thing that some of these arcs are pretty short. Evan McCulloch becomes very boring very quickly as this non-threatening, poorly executed villain with a non-existent rivalry with Barry, and that's just not very engaging. I actually used to hope for Mirror Master to be a main villain because the Mirrorverse would be interesting, and Evan McCulloch 
Like, is a pretty cool villain in the comics, but this arc doesn't really do anything with the Mirrorverse, or if it does, it's not very interesting, nor does the arc properly adapt Evan McCulloch, as gender bending him was not a good idea. Efrat Dor does a good enough job in the role, especially when you compare it to the vast majority of other Eric Wallace era villains, but it's not nearly enough, as aside from the already mentioned issues, Mirror Monarch also has a terrible costume and a poorly conceived motivation, as it becomes increasingly frustrating when the thing the hero was fighting for in this season is for the villain to simply not kill this one terrible person. Obviously, that's a good enough motivation for like one episode, the hero should stop the villain from doing so, but for an entire main villain arc, it becomes so tedious and so frustrating, and the villain just falls flat. Technically making it into the top 10, although that's not really all that big of an accomplishment, is one of the main villains of Season 5, the original Cicada, Orlin Dwyer, who does look cool, especially with this second updated design, and does have this very cool Mjolnir-like lightning dagger, but basically everything else about this villain falls flat. For one, why did they change his name from the comics? For other villains, there is a reason, there's a twist to it, this season had none of it, so why not name him just David Hirsch? Also, his dialogue is mostly good, but the acting from Chris Klein is is mostly really bad. Cicada doesn't really have any rivalry with Barry, and while his motivation and backstory are decently fleshed out, there just comes a point in this season where Cicada transitions from being this relatively threatening and unbeatable main villain into an absolute punching bag who gets beaten down again and again, just to escape every time before finally being killed by his own daughter. Basically, up until episode 9, Cicada is a decent enough villain who has a good threat factor, but once they figure out that Killer Frost is his weakness, Cicada becomes a recurring annoyance they had no idea what to do with, so they just replaced him with another Cicada, before replacing that Cicada with the Reverse Flash. Cicada had potential, but absolutely did not live up to it. I would say this is the cutoff point for when villains start getting good, as one of the best looking main villains on this show is Deathstorm, whose design is perfectly adapted from the comics, and who as a villain works rather well. He's given six episodes, where he starts out as this murderous black flame who's pretty ruthlessly killing people, effectively building him up as a scary villain, and he does end up genuinely being pretty scary. In addition, the use of Ronnie's body was both disturbing and emotionally effective as it connects to Caitlyn, and Robbie Amell does a decent job in the role. Where this villain falters, however, is the underdeveloped motivation, and the limited amount of time we got to see him in his Deathstorm form, due to it being fully CGI, and also just the simple fact that he's kind of an enemy to Frost, not Barry which was never going to be nearly as interesting. Had Deathstorm actually been given more time to be Deathstorm, and had he developed a rivalry with Barry, he might have ended up being a good top tier villain. Instead, he's kind of the worst of the actually good villains, but still good regardless. While genuinely awful at the end of Season 8, in the beginning, in the Armageddon arc, Reverse Flash is definitely not as great as he has been or when he peaked, but he's certainly not bad either, with some points taken off for Tom Cavanaugh just not making any sense in the role and also giving a more over-the-top performance than he did, complete with some pretty bad dialogue as well as looking genuinely awful in the Flash suit. Thawne does have a great story here, with this very comic booky plot of creating his own Flashpoint timeline, and then becoming the Flash himself just to piss Barry off. I actually love that. His rivalry with Barry isn't at its peak or anything, but it's definitely better than most villains. And I also kind of do like the new, more comic book design reverse Flash costume quite a bit, even if it arguably needed the vibrating effect to look good, that kind of is true for the original costume as well. Alongside Thawne is Despero, who definitely definitely is a departure from the comics, as he's far less comically evil with a much more understandable and genuinely heroic motivation, which is a welcome change in my opinion that worked rather effectively on the show. His CGI form is fine, if a bit unusual, with the ginger hair, maybe leaving a bit to be desired, especially since he appears in human form far more. Tony Curran does a good job in the role, held back by the signature bad dialogue of the Eric Wallace era. Despero is a very unique and interesting villain with changes from the comics that I don't mind and actually I appreciate, held back a lot by both the budget and the writing, and maybe also a rivalry with Barry that is overshadowed by Thawne. Speaking of Thawne overshadowing other villains, in his second turn as a main villain, outside of Legends of Tomorrow that is, Thawne acted as a very effective behind the scenes villain during the entirety of season 5. It was this story that brought out any emotional stakes from this season with the whole story of him working with Nora, from which we got a great personal rivalry 
rivalry with Barry and a fantastic showcase of Thawne's manipulative genius and eventually his badassery that was the only really interesting story of the season. The only issue here is that he's played by Tom Cavanaugh in that it makes no sense, but I'd argue that this is Will Zabard's best role outside of season one by far, as Cavanaugh does a far better job here than any of his subsequent appearances, which are all in the Eric Wallace era. Reverse Flash's story and Thawne as a villain completely and utterly overshadow the cicadas as by far the most memorable and effective parts of season five, as both cicadas aren't even in their own season finales. Looking back, it's crazy how much we took the villains of seasons three and four for granted, and the seasons in general. The thinker is worsened by the body switching plots, where none of the other actors are able to convincingly feel like the same character, nor are any of them all that great as actors. And while it is not that small of a stain on DeVoe's reputation, it is arguably the only one. DeVoe's motivation and interpersonal connections are all very well fleshed out and effective. His rivalry with Barry is fantastic. His dialogue, as well as Neil Sandiland's acting, are both great. And by the end of the season, DeVoe becomes so insanely powerful, showcased in one of the best fight scenes in this show's history. DeVoe's plan makes what should be filler episode villains relevant to the story, and making Ralph Dibney one of those metas was a great idea as the emotional stakes of the season are elevated effectively as a part of the villain's plan. Looking back, season 4 was so much better than we gave it credit for, and The Thinker is a genuinely great villain in the top 5, who would definitely be higher if not for the whole body swapping scenario. A villain we arguably took even more so for granted was Savitar, who yes, is a bit derivative, being the third villain in a row who's this new faster speedster than Barry, but I'd argue that that's the only and very easy to overlook big problem with Savitar, who is very threatening, has this awesome voice, and one of, if not maybe the single best villain designs on this show, far better than Savitar's comic design, and a big improvement on the source from the comics, the future Flash suit. Savitar's story and the mystery surrounding him is the is very slow burn, but it was so incredibly intriguing and engaging, which is a level of intrigue the show has not been able to live up to at all since. This leads into this really cool reveal that Savitar is a time remnant of Barry's, which maybe came a bit too late in the season since we really didn't get enough of Grant Gustin as Savitar, but regardless, the rivalry between Savitar and Barry is still great. Savitar is just overall a great villain that I think should be considered top tier for this show. In fact, it was a toss up between Savitar and Bloodwork. The only truly great villain in Eric Wallace's second rate run is Bloodwork, who is given a nice tight seven episode run being the main villain of the season six arc Blood and Truth, where he's given this unique take on a villain who we actually see becoming the villain over time, which was the first time they actually did that, while actually giving him the necessary amount of time to do so. Bloodwork's motivation and development is compelling, his rivalry with Barry is captivating, his Bloodwork form isn't seen very much due to it being fully CGI, but when it is shown, it looks pretty awesome, and when it isn't, Ramsley still works really well as a villain because Sandhill Rama Murthy does a fantastic job, being given probably the best dialogue any Eric Wallace era villain has ever been given, with Bloodwork's unique powers of infecting the mind being used very impressively at the end of this arc. Bloodwork manages to rival the great early speedster villains and early other villains of the show, while only really being held back by the budget, not allowing him to be in his full CGI form for longer. It baffles me how Eric Wallace knocked it out of the park on his first go, but then mostly fumbled everything else. Maybe it was a leftover idea from Todd Helbing. That seems likely if I'm honest. While the second speedster main villain in a row, and absolutely not comic accurate at all, Hunter Zolomon aka Zoom, the main villain of season 2, is still the absolutely perfect and ideal main villain. Now that the Arrowverse has come to an end, I could safely say that Zoom will go down as the scariest of any of the main villains in this universe, with this combination of his frightening design, his terrifying voice, his creepy music, and his overwhelming power and brutality coming together to form the single scariest main villain the CW has ever produced. Zoom is this complete psychopath, portrayed brilliantly by both Tony Zod as Zoom's voice and Teddy Sears when unmasked, who both do a great job held greatly by some fantastic dialogue with quotes people still quote to this day. Zoom is also a part of the best villain twist of this show, as Teddy Sears originally appears as Jay Garrick, with the writers using our preconceived comic knowledge to their advantage in such a way that doesn't just surprise and grip the audience, but also leaves strong emotional stakes for the character. 
characters, which upgrades the rivalry between Zoom and the Flash to such an extraordinary degree. Basically, everything about Zoom throughout this entire 23 episode long run as the main villain made for a compelling, gripping, shocking, and terrifying main villain experience. Zoom was only really outdone before Zoom with the reverse Flash. So you probably noticed from the multiple times I mentioned it in this video, I've gotten sick of Tom Cavanaugh's portrayal of Thawne, and after all these years now that the show has ended, I could say that because of these subsequent appearances, where it doesn't make sense for Tom Cavanaugh to play him, and Tom Cavanaugh's doing a worse job, and the writing gets worse and worse, and he's overused, Thawne is no longer my favorite villain on this show, I could probably say it's Zoom, who has only really had one or two appearances since Season 2, however, within the context of Season 1, completely separating the character from any of his subsequent appearances, Eobard Thawne is still the best main villain on this show. He's the most quotable and most memorable, he has the best rivalry with the Flash, as his story is tied more to Barry than any other, which makes for something far more personal and emotionally engaging than any other subsequent villain. Reverse Flash looks awesome, especially helped by the vibrating and the red eyes, but alongside those things and the changed voice and the helicopter music and the vibrating hand, these were genius additions to the character which became iconic and essential qualities that have kind of been abandoned over the years. Tom Cavanaugh was fantastic fantastic in the role, playing a far less cartoonishly evil villain that he has been played recently, and a more complex, slightly more understandable antagonist with an interesting backstory and personal relationship to the main characters, alongside this insanely gripping intrigue of who Harrison Wells is, who Reverse Flash is, and the mysteries of the future slash original timeline that made for what is still the best season as well as the best main villain on The Flash. They knocked it out of the park on their first try. I just wish Matt Letcher got to be a main villain for this show at least once and not just on Legends of Tomorrow, because I genuinely think that he had the potential to surpass Season 1, Thawne. 